Expedition 1, my favorite uh, Cape Town player um, immediately springs to mind is Benny McCarthy. Um, I was fortunate to have played with him. And of course, uh, he's the only South African to have won the Champions League with a unfancied uh, FC Porto team. Um, so I think he's probably my favorite. But of the slightly older generation, uh, growing up, I was always fascinated in uh, the late uh, Reggie Junji. Um, he, I arrived at Cape Town Spurs when he was still there, and um, yeah, I, always, I always enjoyed watching him, and I'll never forget him. Uh, give Liverpool uh, a huge headache when they played at uh, Newlands Cricket Ground. I think that was in uh, 1994. Yes, uh, Cape Town, in fact, South Africa is a very unique place. Uh, you, particularly in Cape Town, you get there's a vast contrast between your lower income uh, areas and your middle class and upper class areas. So, with football being uh, a sport which is enjoyed by all, um, my colleagues who come from lower income areas will, will normally say to me, Matthew. As a kid, I have two choices, either uh, gangsterism or football. And it's difficult to advise somebody uh, who comes from that background because I don't have any experience, but certainly choosing football or any kind of sport uh, would be uh, preferential. Um, the problem that I have with my two boys is that they come from uh, <coughs> a middle class, upper class background and um, kids like that, um, don't have the same hunger as kids who perhaps come from the townships um, and that's something that I have to keep on impressing uh, on them is to have hunger um, and, and, to want, and to want it um, because middle class and upper class kids have lots of distractions especially when they get to 15, 16, 17 and perhaps the training gets too hard or it gets too difficult for them, they drift off um, but whether you come from whichever class you come from, um, the talent pool is so tight that I always advise boys, no matter what background they come from, is that often it's not it's not your technical abilities that sets you aside from the other player, but it's things like arriving on time, listening to the coach, having determination, having dedication, having perseverance, things like that which you cannot really coach a kid. That will often determine the difference between you becoming a professional and not. Uh, for question three, I've always been very competitive as a, as a, from when I was a kid. I always loved winning, I hated losing, um, and that's what always drove me. Um, especially when I started to play in front of crowds, uh, I was always concerned about how I played and how people viewed me and therefore that drove me on to, to train and to play games to the best of my ability. Um, challenges, uh, the one particular challenge that I have was, was getting over the disappointment of not having uh, played in two World Cups. I got injured, I got called up for the 2002 World Cup and got injured on the way there. Um, playing in a tournament in Hong Kong, that was uh, bitterly disappointing and had to be replaced. And then of course, um, having a good tournament in 2009 and then sitting on the bench uh, for the 2010 World Cup. Um, after having retired, looking back, though that is, is something that um, I will always be disappointed in. Uh, question number four, at school, when I was at school, um, they never offered uh, football, which was a big issue in my family. Um, uh, we were forced to play um, rugby and, and cricket, which I enjoyed, but I didn't like the fact that they didn't offer football. So I got my uh, football fix from uh, the local uh, club, uh, Fishhook uh, AFC. Um, I'm glad to say that now the school does offer uh, football and they have a very strong women's uh, team as well. So that's great to th see that things have changed there, but it's still a big gripe of mine that a lot of uh, 
private and government schools around the country still don't at least offer football. After all, it is the number one sport in, in, in the world and in South Africa. Yeah, I think um, we have in, in Cape Town there's some fantastic talent. Um, but um, more recently, I've kept an eye on uh, Grant Machaman, who's uh, uh, playing at Ajax uh, Cape Town. Um, I get the feeling that he's going to make a move at the end of the season. Um, it would be great to, to have Ajax back up, back up in the PSL and he would have played a huge role in, in getting them there. Um, so he's one definitely to keep an eye on. So I retired about uh, five or six years ago um, and I've gotten involved in a local amateur club on the West Rand. Uh, both my young boys uh, play there. Um, I don't coach on a regular basis, but I do help out uh, when the coaches uh, do ask me. I do also run um, uh, NPO, where we offer, offer coaching clinics. Um, and that has taken me to uh, Cape Town, Mpangeni, um, all over South Africa. And I use um, ex-professionals to come and help take the coaching clinics. It's very much uh, charity driven. Um, Cape Town football, I think, uh, reflects uh, problems all over the country. Um, they have one or two very well-run uh, districts. Um, but what I see happening is that even at your lower LFAs, uh, the petty politics and egos and personalities are getting in the way of good development. Uh, if we can learn to put those aside and work together, and wear our hearts on our sleeves and get people in the right positions who think first and foremost about developing a player um, and not making it a results-driven um, uh, industry uh, at amateur level. I think then that would be a good building block and foundation for amateur football um, all over South Africa. Um, yeah, well, well, certainly the valley that I was born in and grew up in, uh, the Fishuk Valley, which includes um, Ocean View, and now also Masipumalele, um, has a fantastic mix of, of talent. Um, and because it's fairly out of the way from from other distractions and, and uh, clubs coming to poach the young talent, we have quite a nice um, group of, of young, talented um, sports people, not only football, but there's some fantastic athletes that have come out of the valley. Um, but I found that, you know, uh, Fishuk Football Club, um, I think, was established in 1932. So it's not a fly-by-night club. And I find that most of the well-established football clubs, good amateur football clubs, where volunteerism and people who are willing to put time into uh, the establishment and with solid, uh, with a solid committee and democracy at work, I think those clubs have lasted the longest and therefore uh, players tend to be drawn to them and they naturally, they naturally will generate um, uh, players who uh, can potentially become professionals.